I'm afraid I'm a little bit old-fashioned. I speak about urban design and architecture, and only about this. How can we set up the right conditions for high-quality development? What tools might influence urban design and processes before formal procedures? I try to answer these by the example of the EBA. EBA are living labs for planning and architecture. They need a focus based on transformative challenges in society, rooted in their locality. Their processes and implementations deliver new insights for the design of our built environment. Or in other words, an EBA should focus questions of the change in the society, respectively the social transformation, on implications in urban design and architecture. The format EBA is becoming international. In the meantime, you will find an EBA in Switzerland, in France, in the Netherlands, in Austria, and in future perhaps in Luxembourg and in Australia, in Melbourne. I'm not sure if this is really, really good. In Germany, we have guidelines. We have guidelines what we have to do when we say we make an EBA. First, linking the evolution of society with its spatial development. Second, addressing not just innovation in architecture, but also new concepts of urban or rural space. Third, the agenda needs to be derived from local or regional necessities. Fourth, prototypical solution must be developed addressing spatial, economical, ecological, and social aspects. Fifth, excellence, excellence in built projects need to be linked to adequate processes and procedures. Sixth, an international dimension must be implemented from the beginning through contributions on site and relevance abroad. Seventh, an exceptional status must be implemented for its duration, creating a cross-disciplinary lab and pooling resources. Eighth, as an experiment based in reality, all involved must agree on taking risk and being courageous. And nine, an appropriate structure is necessary for imagination and to challenge established procedures. Many of the EBA we discuss now are only a marketing instrument of uh, architecture. But the real EBA is more than that. Each year, annual meetings of the running and the EBAs in preparation in Germany are held at which the EBA must report to the Federal Expert Advisory Council. Our theme, knowledge-based urbanism. Our thesis, as much as the industrial revolution and the car transformed our cities, the knowledge-based society will transform the European city, especially in time of digitalization. Heidelberg is an old city where science and the city have been closely intertwined for more than 600 years. The University of Heidelberg is one of the excellent universities in Germany. Besides the University Six Max Planck Institutes, the German Cancer Research Lab and the European Molecular Lab are located in Heidelberg. The city has about 160,000 inhabitants 40,000 of them are students. The scientific institution are the big employer. Knowledge-based urbanism depends on the relation between science, education, administration, and economy. The challenge in the relationship between town and gown is to balance the different scales in which both works, gown on one side and town on the other side. 
the scientific institution nationwide and international, and the town local. Excellent knowledge pearls, small towns with great universities like Heidelberg, only work well if in addition to the organization between research and education with the public administration, town and gown relationship, the integration of the business economy and the civil, civil society is successful. What's on at IBA Heidelberg? IBA Local, we called it, addresses the urban community. The IBA Lab, the last one about digital city, with the specialists. The IBA Summit, with the town and gown relationship in the global context, and at least the IBA Science and City Lab, the town and gown relationship in the local context. The IBA is a long process. A scientific advisory board is established by the city and discusses options in format and focus to address Heidelberg's specific challenges and opportunities. This board works interdisciplinary with urban designers, architects, landscape architects, pedagogues, social scientists, and natural scientists. The EBA team started in 2013 with city walks through Heidelberg's neighborhoods and sites of knowledge with experts and the civil society. After an open call, the advisory board selected 23 ideas as EBA candidates for 10 weeks in 2018 with an exhibition and more than 70 events. EBA showcases its processes, ideas, and design propose, uh, proposals. Ongoing with 19 projects in four spatial focus areas, EBA continues and widens its scope and engagement with the final exhibition in 2022. With the end of the EBA, the transfer of, transfer of knowledge shall be secured through succeeding forms. Our themes, science in the city of tomorrow, second education in the city of tomorrow, network in the city of tomorrow, as a precondition of the city, and force, metabolism, and climate change as a challenge in the tomorrow cities. And by, last but not least, co-production as a precondition for a timely urban development. These are our projects and our areas we work. In the science, the imaging center of the EMBL, an EBA project because it's a multi-talented house that combines, uh, uh, sorry, it's a, a laboratory building that informs the integrated public about research designed by Gerstner Architects. Second, education. That's not a school alone, it's a multi-talented house that combines the school with the kindergarten and the community center designed by Dutch architect. Networks, a park of a new type, we call him the other park, that links places of cultural education and gives a historically charged place a new identity without hiding the history designed by Studio Vulkan Zürich. Metabolism, climate change, a project of the energy turnaround, a heat accumulator that stores heat from renewable energies and releases it when it's need, designed by Lava Architect Berlin. And the last project, a collaborative project, PH Vision. The idea. Our idea of the city of tomorrow is from the separation of functions in the 1931 Charta von Athen over the mix of functions in the 60s and the 17s 
we called it the European city, to the overlapping functions of the city of tomorrow. Cities are responsible for a significant proportion of CO2 emissions, not only because of the high energy consumption of urban lifestyles. Technical and constructional measures are not sufficient. Smart city alone is not enough. What also needs is a cultural change that will affect the way we rethink neighborhoods and how we better network neighborhoods or cities with each other in future. But it's networking where the problem is. Networking requires infrastructures that are subject to a spirit of control which in turn contradicts the historical idea of the European city. How we resolve this conflict is the real challenge of civilization and culture. There is no doubt that the key lies in networking, linking different modes of transport or linking different green spaces on large or small scale. The solution is not only to be found in other mobility systems, but also in other apartments and other places to work, and above all, more green and open spaces. The streets, which serve all modes of transport, can become parks. The houses with green roofs can become meeting places. Green facades contribute their own part to a better urban climate. Tomorrow's city will not longer consist of houses and streets and isolated squares, but of a network of green spaces. The conclusion of partic particular interest on the content side is, first, the challenges of climate change and its impact on buildings and urban spaces. This includes new types of living, working and open space. Second, the challenge of the mobility revolution and third, and perhaps this is the important, most important thing, the effect of the sharing economy in the city of tomorrow. This is particularly, particularly reflected in the need for new operator models and the networking of urban functions. And on the side of the governments, of the governance structure, first have the courage Establishing think tanks like an international building exhibition beside the all-day administration. Second, and find a new way of government. And this is not easy, which is less about civic participation, but more about finding ways in which citizen can take responsibility beside the architects, the planners, and the investors. <laughs>